You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The Mudlarks Drama Group proudly presents a perfect crime, a Preston mystery in six episodes. Episode six. In last week's episode, a stash of stolen jewellery was discovered hidden in a crate in Farnshaw Manor's priest hole. The Farnshaw's servant, Agnes, has been accused of the theft, but who is the real thief? Well, why don't you ask Lord Farnshaw? Are you accusing my husband, Charles? I don't know what this little minx thinks she can achieve by making such a preposterous accusation, but it's all a pack of lies. What is? Tell her, Aggie. Tell her what you told me. But if you don't tell her, then I will. Come on, dear. If you are in trouble, it'll be better for you to tell us. We might be able to help you. He made me promise not to tell. Who made you promise? What do you mean, Agnes? Don't listen to her, dear. She's only trying to save her own skin. Please, Lord Farnshaw, let her speak. You'd better be careful what you say, my girl. Uh, Go on, dear. One day, a couple of months ago, when I was cleaning in the library, I saw the bookcase had been moved a bit. When I looked closer, I saw it was a door, and I opened it and came in here. I always wondered if there were any secret passages in the manor house. I just had a quick look round and came out. I didn't touch nothing, but Lord Farnshaw saw me. What did he say to you? He was really angry, miss. He wanted to know if I'd looked in any of the crates. I said I hadn't, but he didn't believe me. said I was trespassing and that I would get the sack. That was a bit harsh, Charles. I said nothing of the sort to her. Please, Lord Farnshaw, let Agnes finish. Who are you to be giving me orders in my own house? Charles! Ah! Charles, what are you doing? Let Agnes go! Oh, my Lord! Please, Lord Farnshaw, put the knife down and let Agnes go. It was all going so well. Every time we went to one of my wife's crashingly boring friends' houses... I'd help myself to a piece of jewellery. Or a bit of silver. They all have so much more than we do. Oh, didn't you know? We're practically broke. Charles, I don't understand. Don't you, dear? How do you think we've been managing since the war? I've been selling these little trinkets up in London. Oh, I've been very careful. Just one or two pieces every now and then. But then this nosy little servant found my stash. But... I told her... I wouldn't tell the police that she was a petty thief as long as she kept quiet about my little enterprise. I'd taken that pearl necklace of yours a couple of days ago because I thought it was about time this house became a target of the jewel thief. It would have been suspicious otherwise, but it appears that little Agnes here had a sudden fit of loyalty. Aggie knew it was you who had stolen it as soon as Lady Farnshaw said it was missing. And you really were putting it back when I saw you? Oh, yes, my lady. I'm sorry, Agnes, but I thought... Well, this is all very cosy, but I think it's time Agnes and I left. Marjorie, my dear, would you give my apology to our other guests? Joel! Now, if you don't be kind enough to move aside, we will make our way along the tunnel. (laughs) Ah. Well done, Crinkle! So, Crinkle stopped Lord Farnshaw from escaping... Violet, Agnes, I held him down while Marjorie went to call the police. I think she told the other guests that Lord Farnshaw had been taken ill and she was calling for an ambulance. But it wasn't long before everyone knew what really happened. All the jewellery and other pieces that were hidden in the priest hole were returned to their owners. Marjorie, Lady Farnshaw, had gone to live with her sister. The police are satisfied that she had nothing to do with the theft. Agnes and Violet are thinking of setting up a little tea room in the village. Just think, Shirley dear, if my crinkle hadn't stopped Lord Farnshaw, well, I don't know what would have happened to Agnes. (laughs) (laughs) You're never going to hear the last of that. (laughs) Well, you have to admit it was quite an adventure. Oh, there's a (sighs) P.S. She says she's coming up to London this weekend and she'll pop in. You know what, Martha... Do you want to be away for at least a couple of months and I really fancy a week or two by the seaside? Would you like to come with me? Um, yes, please. That would be lovely. Thank you. I'll ring the hotel now. You have been listening to A Perfect Crime, a Preston Mystery, 
performed by the Mudlarks Drama Group. Mrs Shirley Hames was played by Steph. Miss Jean Maple was played by Pat. Martha Tillett was played by Sally. Cora Bunkle was played by Sam. Lord Charles Farnshaw was played by Steve. Lady Marjorie Farnshaw was played by Titch. Violet was played by Steph. Agnes was played by Pat. Preston and Crinkle appeared as themselves and the introductions were read by Michael and Zoe.